OK, this video is going to demonstrate how to use Autodesk Inventor to create a frame using the Frame Generator tool. I'm going to do this in the assembly environment, and I'm going to also do it using a solid body. Uh, there are several different ways to create frames using the Frame Generator, um, but one of the easiest ways is to have a solid model that represents the frame that you want to build, and then use the edges of that, that solid body to place your members. Um, so that's the way I'm going to demonstrate it here. Uh, notice that I've already got a project created. Okay, so it's ready to go. And I'm going to start by just jumping right in and creating a new assembly. And I want to create a part in place for my envelope. So I'll choose create here. I'm going to call this the skid envelope. Um, because it's just going to be the envelope that like defines the size of this of this skid that I'm de de that I'm creating here, and I'm going to change the default bill of material structure from normal to reference, uh, because I don't want this to actually to be a part of the bill of material. It's again, it's just a reference item that we're using to define the other item. So I'll choose OK there. It now asks me to sketch the to select the sketch plane for the base feature. So I'll expand the origin and I'm going to pick that XZ plane, which is the top. And now I can come in and start my sketch. I'm going to create it on that top plane. And I'm going to make a simple <clears throat> rectangle here that is uh, 60 inches long by uh, 24 inches wide. Okay, so there we go. So there's my there's my base. That's going to be the, the size and shape of it, basically. So I'll say finish this sketch. And then I want to extrude this. <clears throat> I'll extrude it 36 inches so that uh, I can have my skid developed. I'll choose OK. So now this prism defines the outsides. It's going to be the maximum size of my, of my skid as I develop it. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color from this default gray but I'm going to change it to a, a clear blue um, because as I'm placing my parts, you'll be able to see through this if it's clear and it'll just help us for design purposes. So I can save this now <clears throat> and return to my design or to my, uh, uh, to my assembly environment. And now I need to save this assembly. So I'll save this and I'll call it skid assembly. Um, or I'll call it skid frame. <clears throat> and now we're ready to go. Okay, so to begin building your frame, you just simply go from the assemble tab to the design tab, and you'll see here that we have a tool called insert frame. Okay, so when I click on this, it's going to say, okay, uh, let's insert some frame members. Starting in the upper left-hand side, there are several different standards to choose from. I can choose ISO or JIS, or you know, if I'm working in Asia or Europe, or GB if I'm working in the United Kingdom. Uh, but here in the United States, I'm going to stick with the uh, ANSI, that's American National Standards Institute. So I'll pick that one. And then it, the next thing I can choose is my family. Okay, so if I look through here, there's all different sizes and shapes. There's flat bars and tubes and uh, pipes and so on down here at the bottom. There's other pipes and round bars. Uh, there's even wide flange beams. Uh, but the one that I want to start with is this mechanical channel, this C-shaped channel. So I'll pick that one. And then the next thing that I can do is I can choose the size that I want. So there's small channels, you know, like this is a three inch by three and a half pounds per foot. Uh, this one's four inches by four and a half pounds a foot. The one that I want is going to be a little bit beefier. I want a big channel because I'm making a heavy duty frame here. So it's going to be a six inch channel. It weighs 8.2 pounds per foot. I'll pick that one. Um, this, the, the material is mild steel and I've changed the appearance here to medium gray uh, just because it shows up a little bit better as I'm creating my frame. Uh, the next thing that we can do is we can place our parts. Okay, so if I come down here into the design area and I move up against my box, you'll see how it highlights the edge there. If I pick that point, 
you'll see how it simulates putting a channel in there for us. And the reason that it put the channel on that center dot is because that's where the center is here. So I can move that channel to a different spot. For example, if I pick that point there, it moves it to the, uh, to the top right corner. If I need to, I can change the angle of it. You know, I could rotate it in this way, or I could rotate it out this way. Uh, or I could come back and I could actually, you know, just type in an angle if I had a specific angle that I wanted it to be rotated. I do want that to be straight up and down. Uh, additionally, I, I want this not to be, you know, up there, but I want it to be all inside. So I'm going to pick that lower corner down there. And then to pick the rest of them, I can just work my way around. I can pick those other four, other three sides. So now they're all chosen. They're all ready to go and I can choose apply. After I choose apply, it asks me to create a new frame and it's actually creating a sub assembly here. It's giving it a, a unique name. So it says frame and then this is a unique number that's associated with that. If I wanted to, I could come in and change this and give it any name I wanted. But uh, for the sake of what we're doing here, it's not important that I change this name. It's also creating a new part file, which is a part of that sub assembly. Uh, which is the skeleton which will define all of the corners that i use when i define my frame size so for this page you can just choose okay and then on this page here it gives you the option of changing the names of these individual parts so if i wanted to come in for example and change the name of this part this one here is for example that one okay this is the shorter end here okay that's the other long side and that's the other short side if I want to change these, you can just click the ellipsis and then you can rename it here if you want. So I'm going to just click that last number part there and I'm going to say, okay, this is the long side one. Okay. And then this one, I'll go ahead and I'll change all four of them. This is going to be short side one. Whatever name you give it has to be a uh, unique name that is appropriate for this. So. There we go. So now the third one is going to be long side two. And then this one will be short side two. And then save and OK. And once I choose OK, it creates all four of those parts and brings me back to the insert tab here where we could start over again. If I close that for a moment and I look at this, you'll see that it's put in my four channel pieces, uh, but they are still overlapping. You know, at the corners there, you can see how they overlap and that really wouldn't work. But uh, for now, we just got the parts in and that's them. That's the important part that we're thinking of here. OK, so I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to place the rest of the frame members that we need to complete this design. So I'll go back to insert frame and this time I'm going to stick with ANSI, but I don't want this mechanical channel anymore, uh, but I want the rectangular, the square tube. Okay. So we're going to pick this top one here and I'm going to stick with the two by two by one eighth tube. So it's two inches by two inches with the eighth inch thick wall. Again, this steel mild and uh, we're going to leave this as medium gray. And now I can come back out here and I can start placing my parts. Okay, so I'll leave it there just to see what it looks like. I'll pick that one. And it's pretty much exact opposite of what I want. So I'll pick that corner there. Uh, so now it's inside. For these, because they're all different, I'll have to do them one at a time. So I'll choose apply on this one. I'm not going to bother changing the name. Uh, and then I can move to this one. And I need to turn it around. Okay, so I'll apply there and OK. And then I'll apply this one. OK and OK. And then the last one, this front corner here, and put it there and apply and OK. And then the last thing that I want to do here is put in another set of two by two tubes around the top here. Um, that will be, you know, kind of the finish this frame out. So I'll say I want there. And again, I got to turn it around so that it's where I want it to be. That looks good. These four I should be able just to pick. 
and then choose OK and OK. And so now you'll see that we've got all the members of the frame in place. Uh, they, they still overlap. They need to be trimmed up and changed a little bit, but they're all in place. So I'm going to save this. This is Autodesk, by the way. You make sure you want to save often because you don't want to have it crash and lose all the work that you've done. At this point, uh, you'll notice now that I've got all of my different parts in the browser over here as part of the assembly. Okay, And then I also have that skid envelope. Remember, this was just for design purposes, and now that I've got all my parts in place, I can't. I don't want to delete this because I can use this to change the sizes later, perhaps, if I want to make it bigger or smaller. But I don't want to see it anymore, so I'll just right-click on here and uncheck the visibility state. So now that all we see is what's left here. Now, if I look at this, <clears throat> there definitely are issues because this vertical leg, for example, you can see how it extends through the channel and, you know, they, we've got three different things occupying the same space there and that just wouldn't work. So what we want to do is we want to come in and, and start tr trimming these things out and, and making them all fit together. So I'm going to do that um, starting with the, the frame down at the bottom. And to make things easy, I'm just going to take all of these over here and I'm going to highlight and then shift. I'm just going to turn the visibility off on these so that we don't have to look at them while we're working. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to notch these out. Okay. Um, generally speaking, when they have channels, they take and they cut one of them so that it fits inside the C on the other one. And then that way we get nice clean corners and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to use this notch tool on this one. So I'm going to say notch <clears throat> and you're going to select your frame member that you want to cut that, that need to be notched. So I'm going to say my notch pieces are going to be that one there and that one there. And then I need to pick the pieces that are going to be receiving it. So I'll pick that one there and that one there. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see that I've got a 16th of an inch gap that's going to go inside of here. And that would be so that they fit together easy and there's some room to put a weld in there and you get a nice penetration on your weld. So at this point I can just choose OK. And you'll see what happens here now is it's come in and it's notched the outside or this piece that goes outside so that it fits inside of there. If I turn it around like this and zoom up, you can see now that it's notched this piece so that it fits inside and it's all looks really good and is ready to go. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, now I need to come back in and I'm going to take these and I'm going to turn the visibility back on on these so that we can see them again because we need to take and fix these up as well. Okay, so now I want to work on the vertical legs next. Uh, these vertical legs need to be trimmed up a little bit so they don't extend through. So I'll use the trim tool on these. With the trim tool, I'm going to select the parts that I want to trim. So I'll say trim that, trim that, trim that, and trim that. And then I can pick the face that I want to trim them to. And this face is parallel with the same sides on, on the same faces on the other side. So I'll pick that there. And you'll notice there that it says uh, apply. Okay, and then if you wait, see how it trimmed out the leg so that it doesn't stick down inside of there anymore. Okay. I can do the same thing again, trim, 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 trim. Um, but for the face on this one, I'm going to pick the underside of this right there. And so it trims all those out. And now uh, if I look at this, you'll see how this piece here doesn't go up into those pieces. So it's nice and cut out there. And then I'm going to finish this out and make sure you save it every now and then. I'm going to finish this out by mitering this top frame together. Okay, so a miter uh, creates like a 45 degree corner on the ends there, uh, just like a picture frame, for example. I already have this set with a 16th of an inch gap between the two pieces so that, again, you get a little room to put a weld in there and get some good penetration on the weld. So all you have to do is pick your two frame members and choose the apply, and you'll see how it applies it creates the miter there okay and i'm going to say i want to do the same thing here and here 
and then finally here and then OK. So that completes the uh, creating the, the skid frame itself for the miter. If you decided that you maybe wanted one more uh, C channel in here, um, but you didn't have a, a part of a, a drawing to do that, that would be very simple to do. Okay, uh, let me save this before we move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this skid envelope <clears throat> and I'm going to make the visibility on again and I'm just going to double click on it. So now I'm working inside that part again. I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to create an, uh, oops, I don't want to finish the edit just yet. I'm going to say I want to create a new sketch, okay, and I want it to be on that bottom surface. So I'll pick that bottom surface um, and I'm going to project you know, that geometry there. And then I just want a line that's gonna go from the midpoint there to the midpoint there in case I wanted, say, another frame member to go there. So all I need really is that frame, is that, that, that member there. So I can say, okay, finish that sketch and then return, okay? So now in order to place that part in, if I want another frame member on there, okay, I can do that. Um, all I have to do is go back again to insert frame. And again, I'm going to go back to my mechanical channel. And I've got my 6 by 8.2. This time I want it there. And I'll pick that there. Notice that it puts it in. It's already centered up and ready to go. I can choose OK on this. And it, you know, again, it gives it the name. And then the last thing would be to um, notch that. Okay, because you notice it's not notched again. So I'll say, okay, let's go back through and notch that. So this is the part that's going to get notched. And then the parts here and here are the ones that are going to be changing the shape. So we'll say, okay. And so now that part is again notched so that it fits inside of there. And even though it doesn't look like it from the isometric view, it actually is centered up inside of there. So that concludes how to create the frame itself, including using a solid body and a sketch in case you want to do it that way. Um, the next video that I create will show how to create a drawing and then create individual drawings of individual parts.